Welcome back into the Sports Drive, everyone. I'm Riley Robinson, and my first guest for today, West Texas A&M's head coach for men's and women's cross country, Zach Daniel. How are you doing today, coach? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm great. Thank you for joining us on this Friday. Y'all had a lot of achievements, and I'm just super excited to dive right into them and talk to you about them. And I kind of just want to first start off. So the men got first at the LSC tournament this past weekend. Women came in second. So just I just want to start off with a generic question. Just how proud of you are of this team for both the men's and women's side? Yeah, yeah, it was a great moment for us. I mean, I ran a WT and was actually part of that men's team that started this tradition of conference titles back in 2013. So being able to coach them to number 10 was was an awesome moment for me. And then our women finishing second, obviously, every time we go to a championship, we want to win. But uh, we finished 11 points behind Dallas Baptist, who's the seventh ranked uh, team in the nation at the moment. So I think we're in a really good spot moving forward. And I'm really, really proud of the way we showed up on that day. Speaking of that good spot, um, the men are ranked at 25th. Women are at 24th, I believe. So how does that just put you in a good spot heading into the NCAA regionals um, next weekend? Yeah, we're excited about region. I think we're in a really good spot moving forward. Uh, our men would really, it's looking like we'd have to be top six in order to qualify. I think that's something that this group is definitely capable of doing, especially with individuals such as Harry Lord or really stepping up at conference and building some steam going into regional. So I'm excited to see what they can do. And then Florence won her third straight individual title. And I got the chance, I know, about a month or so ago to catch up with her and Innocence kind of on their success over the years. But like I said, third straight title, what is what growth have you seen just from her, not just in the years, just this season as well? Yeah, she's one of the most resilient individuals I've ever coached. Right, She's had some things that have set her back. Uh, within her career and every time she just comes back that much stronger and she's obviously a very talented individual and on top of that she works really really hard so I, i'm every time she steps on the line and is able to do her thing i'm always proud of her and for her to do that at conference was really something special and then you kind of mentioned it you had a guy step up for the um individual runner one the what's his name laura dora's last name laura Dora. yeah laura <laughs> Sorry, some I am. That's one of the absolute worst things I am is pronouncing people's names sometimes. Yeah. But anyways, he kind of stepped up, took the championship home for the LSC men's side. Just what growth? He's only a sophomore, so what growth have you seen just from him? And what did what have you seen just resilience wise from the beginning of the season for him to get to this point? Yeah, well, Harry Lordor is actually an international athlete for us, so uh, he had a long track season into the summer. That's when. Uh, Europe mostly has their big championship races. So he actually ran 14.10 for 5K this summer. So I knew that he was going to have a great cross-country season. But he's just on a little bit different timeline to some of the you know local kids. Uh, we had to rest him really at the beginning of the season and just really make sure that we were patient with him so he could build as much as he has this fall. And he had a good race in Louisville about a month ago. So I knew he was coming on at the right time. And uh, just having him race on rested legs for the first time, I think, was the big difference this week. And then kind of speaking on that Louisville tournament, that was the only tournament I saw when I was looking kind of at the schedule and where y'all placed, where y'all didn't come in the top four for men's and women's. The rest of them, y'all came in top four for each side. And so what has that just meant to you in this program, just kind of seeing, because I know at Louisville, you're obviously going against some very tough Division One. Mm -hmm colleges and that so just seeing how they perform on that kind of level and then just taking it into these other meets yeah louisville is always a very competitive race it's mostly division one schools but that's exactly why we go out there you know i want i try to tell these athletes not to be scared of anybody regardless of the division so for them to go out there and compete with the best in the country is always exciting and uh, just staying local we've competed at tech a few times abilene and those are those meets where we've really placed well and I think both give the individuals confidence. You know, they understand that they can go out and compete against D1s and be great. And then in some of these smaller meets where they're really up front, pressing the pace, uh, that has some benefits as well. And then 10 all-conference honors for your teams. And then you were even named LSC Coach of the Year. Congrats on that. But just how has it been coaching this program? I know you said that you used to run at WT. So how has it been just still being able to be a part of this program? 
Yeah, it's exciting for me every day. You know, sometimes I still can't believe I was given this job opportunity. This this program did so much for me as an individual and growing up in it and just the growth I had in it. I really try to do my best to to share that experience with the athletes and even prove upon things that, you know, I necessarily didn't like. So just being able to be a part of it as much as it did for me is, is always something special. And I'm, I'm very blessed every day to, to be able to work here. That's awesome. And like we said, both teams headed to Denver next Saturday for that NCAA South Central Regional competition. So just speaking of competition, what have you seen from some of those teams that y'all be competing against there? Yeah, so the South Central region is without a doubt the hardest region in the nation. So the way that the NCAA qualifying system works is you take three autos from every region. Uh, so there's eight regions, so you get 24 auto bids. And then the next 10 teams they take are at large. So just to give you an idea of how tough this region is, last year on the men's side, or on the women's side, sorry, half of the at-large bids came from this region. So it's very, very competitive. Uh, some of the best teams in the nation, like I said, uh, really just the RMAC conference being in there. All the schools from Colorado who have always traditionally been very, very good at cross country. Uh, they're they're good every year. So we, we know what to expect uh, going into this. It's going to be some tough competition. But, you know, our group's excited coming off a of conference and what we were able to do. And I think we're ready. So with that momentum and everything coming off of the conference tournament, like you just said, what will it take to get to Seattle in a few weeks? Yeah, I think for our men, it's it's going to be top six is guaranteed. Now, we won't know until Monday after the meet when they make the selection show. And then for the women, it's either six or seven, you know, just being in that top six or seven, uh, which traditionally is still very competitive. And I mean, our women, I believe, were seventh last year and then they were 13th in the nation, if that gives you an idea of, wow. of how tough it is. That's awesome. That's awesome. But how are you guys are just preparing for that? Because I know you can prepare all day long, you know, for these meets in the regular season, then you have Lone Star, but this is the big stage. I mean, there's three different sides to a schedule, I believe. There's preseason, regular season, then the postseason. Like we're in the postseason run. So how are you guys preparing differently just at practice and at workouts? Yeah, well, this is a day that we've talked about since the individual stepped on campus in August. And we we sat down with the team and I sat down with each individual and we really just talked about uh, their goals, their goals for the team. And then we got together as a group and, it, you know, explained what it would take to make another national meet. And then not just that, but to place well at the national meet. So I think we've been, we've had this day in our mind for a long time now. So in terms of preparation, I mean, we've been trying to do that for three or four months now. So I, I think we're going to be ready when it counts. That's awesome to hear. And just kind of everyone knows cross country track had shared the same athletes, you know, doing different things. So how do you feel like a lot of this momentum will carry on past this season into track season with a lot of these athletes who do both? Yeah. I mean, I've seen it time and time again, uh, individuals who have a great cross country season almost always end up having a great indoor and an outdoor. And it's, it's like you said, it's just carrying that momentum. Uh, they get more confident in their ability to compete. And I mean, we saw that in Eleanor Kurtabi last year and uh, even individuals such as innocent they had they were all americans in cross country and then they bounced back and were both able to get uh, some school records i mean eleanor got three school records last outdoor season so it's a big big confidence booster when you ever have whenever you have a good cross season going into indoor and outdoor oh i bet well again thank you so much for chatting with us today coach and good luck next saturday as you head to denver for the super regionals that was super exciting we're all cheering you on but again thank you so much for joining us Yes, ma'am. You have a good day. Thank you. You too. And we'll be right back on the Sports Drive with Preston Moore.